March is a month of transition. We go from winter to spring, cold weather to warm, and we go from sitting around dreaming about farming to having to get out and do something. You know, it's hard to believe that just a few weeks ago we were covered in ice, snow was in the forecast, and now as I look out over the high tunnel and look at these raised beds that need to be tended to and turn around and look around the garden and take a look at our blackberry canes that need to be pruned off from the winter, and I start looking around the farm, there's just so much to do. and it's kind of hard really to transition from sitting around the fireplace and drinking tea or staying inside the house where it's nice and climate controlled and venturing outside is going to be an everyday occurrence. But you know, when you live on a farm, you have to be ready to, to weather the storms as they come. Uh, so far this year, we've been lucky. We've had some wind storms, had some rain storms. We've had a little bit of snow. We've had some ice, uh, late winter ice. And, um, you know, I just had an opportunity to go to Florida for a few days on some business, and that helped a lot. That helped me get kind of over the wintertime blues. And when I came back, it's, uh, it's just time to get to work. There's so much to do. Uh, and I know that you guys are, are excited about the gardening season. A couple months ago, we had a meeting in the greenhouse called a gathering in the greenhouse. I had a great group of people show up, and we talked about how you can get a jump start, start on your season. So... Let's go in the high tunnel a little bit and see how my season's going so far and show you what can be done now in the garden to help you through that transition from winter to spring. And even if you don't have a high tunnel, how you can make your own environment that you can control just like the one in the house that you enjoyed all winter long. Like everything else on the farm this time of year, the high tunnel is gonna be kind of a mess. So I hope you'll excuse it as we go in. You know, we haven't really spent a lot of time in here yet, but. It's not a bad day to do it. It's in the 40s outside and kind of breezy, so it's a kind of a typical March day. Uh, but here in the high tunnel right now, according to the thermometer, it's almost 90 degrees in here. Um, you know, we tell kids when they come to the farm, that's solar heating. That's the, all the energy that's stored in plants and that animals consume when they eat plants and everything else in the world is, so, world is solar energy. And, it's one of the little lessons we're able to give to kids when they come here is that uh, they can step in the greenhouse when it's 80 degrees out on a 40 degree day and they can feel that solar heating. And the benefits of that solar heating is rather evident right now in the greenhouse. I'll show you some of the stuff that we've already got growing. I have to admit that some of this salad lettuce that we planted early, really not doing as well as I had expected. This is baby leaf lettuce, this is called Elegance, uh, no, now let's see, uh, five-star greenhouse mix of seeds available from Johnny's. Over here, we've got a couple of different kinds of radishes that have come up. They were just little bitty babies the other day. You know, they haven't been tended to because I've been away for a week, but uh, they're doing okay. Today, with the temperatures the way it is and the amount of sunlight they're getting, I'm sure we're going to get some good bulbing radishes here before too long. I direct seeded some old onion seed uh, not too long ago. If you take a look in here, they're coming up, but they're kind of weak. Onion seeds don't really keep very well. They only have about an 80 or 90, uh, I'm sorry, about an 80% at the top uh, germination rate. So getting anything at all from direct seeds is not bad. Over here, you can see I've got a, a little bit of the carrot crop coming up. They were planted very early and uh, carrots uh, germinate better with a little bit warmer soil. Uh, and they do take a little while to kind of get up. Those are just some volunteer kale plants from last year that stayed in the soil we did minimal tillage over here this is ovation greens mix uh, this is a delicious salad mix and we've already harvested some for ourselves and we've got more for our customers who are going to be coming online here any day now um, this is our baby spinach it's time to cut this entire little bit of a row and over here is one of the best crops that i've ever raised something i think is just an amazing crop it adds a great deal of variety and flavor and crunch to your salads and is red Russian kale. 
it's uh, ready to go. It should have been harvested and we can still harvest it now, but it's a cut and come again crop. So we can cut it and harvest it and uh, sell it or uh, give it to our farm partners uh, right now. And uh, it makes a great addition to your salads. We amended this soil down through here, as you can see, with uh, some new compost this year and uh, planted uh, both yellow and red beets. We're really not getting a lot of germination yet. I haven't seen much in the way of germination, um, but it should be coming on any day. I've been gone, so I haven't really been able to keep up with the watering, and I think that we're gonna probably have a good beet crop we did last year. This is the uh, gritter mechanism that I bought from Connor Crickmore, and uh, it, it, it helps us lay out our beds and keep nice straight rows, which is gonna help us later on when we're trying to do cultivation and weed control, the spacing between the rows will be uniform enough that we can drag a hoe down through there and take care of the weeds in one pass. This row is a little bit of a disappointment thus far, um, only about two weeks into planting our first attempt at Salanova lettuce, which is a great new variety of lettuce. Seeds are a little on the expensive side, and I've noticed that a lot of the people that are growing Salanova are starting transplants. Uh, I seeded this directly in the hopes that we could avoid all the cost and expense and delay of transplanting these seeds. And I haven't seen anything that looks like great germination, but I'm starting to see just a few little spots like right here where I'm getting the occasional plant cropping up. Here's another little one right over here. And right in here, I see another one. So I think I'm gonna get germination here. We ought to start seeing a little bit more robust uh, evidence of the Salanova in the next couple of days. This bed is a uh, well amended soil and just a very friable, uh, great tilth to it. And uh, we've planted snow peas in here uh, I haven't really seen anything in the way of germination yet, at least not much in the way of leaves coming through, although I did notice that there were some roots on a couple of the seeds uh, that, that appeared uh, before they were completely covered. So I'm saying that within the next couple of days, again, with the temperatures warming up a little bit here in March, we ought to have a good crop of snow peas uh, any day. One of the things that causes me a little bit of concern is that we haven't been able to get to some of our apple trees. We've gotten some of the pruning done, some of the water sprouts have been pruned off, but not enough. We've gotten behind. Um, the weather so far had been pretty cold. We had some temperatures down around zero just last week, and so a little hard to get people at zero degrees to climb up in a ladder in the wind. But we've got a lot of the water sprouts off. Some of the trees just really need to get finished up here soon. This warm weather is gonna cause a bud to break or two, and I'm starting to see some buds. So we gotta get this pruned off. Um, it's that time of year when everything kind of needs to be done all at once. And I, I, I hazard to say that there's always more to do than you can get done. And that's kind of the life on a farm. You know, you can, there are a lot of people who live in the country and have really adapted well to you know, the entire farm life, farm experience, and uh, we have. We've learned to live with the seasons, learned to live with the rain, learned to live with the snow, learned to live with the wind, learned to kind of live with disappointment because that's part of farming too. But, you know, when you look around at everything that has to be done, uh, March is just that month of the year when you want to get it all done at once. You just, you just can't wait to get everything ready. You just... You know, you're just chomping at the bit. Winter's been here long enough. You've had enough cold weather. You've had enough rain. You've had enough of the sitting around doing nothing kind of stuff. And you want to get outside and do something. And so, you know, you get a day like today where it's really just in the 40s. But man, you really want to get out and do something. So I guess today it's important. It's not really what I would call um, productive in, in, in some respects. But it's important that you at least take the time to assess what's going on. Um, it's really not enough to just jump in and start doing stuff. You really have to take stock of what has to be done. You've got to do a lot of planning. Uh, winter's a great time for planning, but you know, you can plan all winter long and then 
you walk outside in the spring and you look around at everything you think needs to be done and uh, it turns out that you've missed a few things or new things come to mind and you, you start thinking about new projects you can take on. Um, I guess that's part of the revival of spring. It gives, you, uh, it gives you new grass, it gives you new crops, it gives you new buds on your apple trees, it gives you new things in your high tunnel and it gives you new ideas for your farm. So March is really a month of transition in a lot of ways, not just for the stuff that's growing and, and for the young uh, animals that are breaking out and enjoying warm days and eating green grass for a change, but also for human beings who have a view of what the future is going to hold. It, it's really kind of hard to explain, but you know, if you live in an environment that's controlled all year round and you live on concrete and sidewalks and paved roads and you never have to face mud and you never have to face adversity and all the things that come with living on a farm you miss kind of that realism of being involved in life and you know, I hope to do that with this video series this year is to bring you a little closer to what the real life on a farm is like um, you know it's not really pretty here right now I mean I'm gonna walk you over just I, I hate to do this I really do you know in some respects when people come to visit I want them to see the farm when it's gorgeous when it's beautiful when it's you know lush and green and whatnot but this time of the year I mean I want you to see my horses yeah I know you want attention that's right where do you see these guys I mean it, it, you're, you're gonna be amazed that literally how muddy they are I mean just look at how filthy they are because of the weather this time of year and the lot that they're in I mean it's just it's not clean it hasn't been picked it hasn't been raked, it even hasn't had a chance to dry out enough um, that it's a solid surface for them to walk on. It's just a mess. Everywhere on the farm is kind of ugly and muddy and rutted and just, it's not pretty this time of year for people who would come and visit and expect to see something out of a magazine. But for me and for people who live in the country, the potential's there, we see that. We feel a little bit of warmth in the air. We see a little bit of green grass starting to sprout up. I mean, there is some grass that's greening up. We see the buds on the trees. You know, I've got lettuce growing in the greenhouse. You know, there's a, there's a green in the trees. If you look up in these big, huge American elm trees behind me, you can see that the branches aren't completely bare. There's something on them now. They're starting to, they're starting to come alive. And so, Living on a farm brings you in close proximity to the realities of life and the harmonies of the season. And in March, it brings you really, really close to the wonder and the excitement of a new season of growing things and people coming and enjoying the farm and just the entire experience of living right here in the middle of God's creation, up close and personal. So. Hey, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. There's a little bell. If you hit the little bell, you'll get notification when new content posts. And uh, if you like what we do, hit the little like button. And all, by all means, do whatever you like. Answer, say anything you like in the comments. If you've got questions or comments, add them. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. And if you've got specific questions about gardening, send them to me. I'm easy to reach at steepleviewfarm.net. And when you come to visit, don't forget we're easy to find. We're located right on US 127, five miles south of Glencoe, 11 miles north of Owenton, in beautiful downtown Poplar Grove, Kentucky. We hope to see you here.